Hello and welcome to this training session. My name is Ashraf Ayad and I'll be working with you today in one of the production library shaders. It's called MIP Motion Vectors. So let's get started. The idea behind motion vectors is that uh, you want to take out the motion blur from the actual rendering and do that in post. That will be done via motion vectors. If you look at my scene here, I have a simple animation of character running off a building and the uh, render time is about 1 minute 14 seconds. So if I come here for example back to the same frame that I was at but this time I want to see my animation in motion blur. So what I'm going to do now I'm just going to enable my regular motion blur and I'm just using all the default values. I'm just going to keep this image for future comparison and render time again is 1 minute 14 seconds. So here's the render for the motion blur and you'll notice here it start adding blur and the blur is an actual process in the rendering because what we will see in uh, the uh, motion vectors it's a post process same that was done with the MIP motion blur and I'm having final gather here for the rendering just to uh, eliminate the scene nothing more so you can see starting to see here the motion blur and you can see now there's a lot of blur happening on her own, especially around her head area and the uh, render time has increased dramatically to four minutes it was one minute before so let's keep this image one more time what I'm gonna do right now I'm just gonna close the shutter in the motion blur so the shutter opens at zero and closes at zero there means there will be no, sh no motion blur we just triggered the motion blur command surrender so now you see there is no motion blur even though that we have motion blur triggered just because we had the shutter open shutter close at a value of zero and notice again the render time has dropped what we need to do now is to extract the motion vectors so we can use that in post for example in using com applications such as combustion or after effects or toxic uh, these applications can calculate the motion vectors on the fly and give you motion blur in post so let's see how we're going to do that. One thing I might want to mention here, because since I'm using two, Maya 2009, it has built-in render passes that three of them are related to motion vectors. So the 2D motion vector, 3D motion vector, and normalized 2D motion vectors. The MIP motion vectors were introduced in Maya 2008, actually. It was a, a hidden shader, as we already knew. In this particular exercise, we're just going to work with it just to see how it works. You can easily go with the render passes, but in case if you want to need to know how to use this, we're going to go just with the MIP motion blur. Sorry, the MIP motion vectors. So grab my node. I'm going to go to the hyper shade. Select my camera. Here it is and I'm gonna grab under the mentor ray node we already know it's a post process so I'm just gonna go to the output shaders and grab the motion vectors so I have my MIB motion vector and the perspective shape node Let me grab this up I'm gonna go middle mouse drag the motion vector on top of the perspective and I'm gonna choose other I wanna make sure on both left and right to show hidden so I'm going to take the message out of the MIB motion vector and I'm going to go look for the MI or the mental images section. Well, there you go, the mental ray controls. And since this is an output shader, I'm just going to collect it in here. Hit close. Now, if we look at the parameters of the MIP motion vector, we have a bunch of them that are similar to the MIP motion blur but other different values. So just let's render this by default and see how it will look like. Get this image and render. See now the render is going very quickly and since this is a post process the image will display after the render is complete. So the render is complete but it did not flip to uh, the MIP motion vectors or actually it did not give me the motion vector and I think I know why because I forgot to enable a couple of items in the actual output. So let's minimize that for a second and select the camera. If you go down here under the mentor ray, now you have that legacy output shader has been added just because of the connection that we just made. By default, it only gives you color. We want depth and motion vector as well. 
if you're going to be rendering float or short, where, which is a different type of bits, like this is 8 bits, uh, this could be 16 or 32 for float, we can adjust it accordingly. So let's render that one more time. So the final step of the render. And here you go, that's what I was expecting. So this pretty much is the variation of uh, green and uh, red colors. And this is what we get used to calculate the motion vectors in post. So what you happening in here is that all these pixels get a value of red and green according to their uh, position in the in the screen. So the x-axis, for example, will take the red, and the green will go for the y-axis. Production uh, applications such as Toxic or After Effects will look at these values and calculate the motion blur, drive it from it. So in order to get more of these color information embedded in your render, it would be recommended to render at the floating point so you can have more color embedded rather than just 0 to 225 you will have more colors or more calculation for the colors that can be embedded in that image but for the sake of simplicity I'm just going to be using the 8-bit for this demo so let's have a quick look at our parameters that we have in the MIP motion vectors so the first thing we're going to be looking at is the maximum displace and this value is by default is uh, 50 however you can adjust this value according to your need and what this actually does it will set the maximum encode value or that number that will be for the vector length and that length is that one going to be decided or actually going to be encoded in the motion vector itself as the maximum movement of these pixels so if you want these pixels to move a little bit further than this in your motion blur you will have to increase this maximum distance and since we're working with 8-bit we should be using the 50 as the value of choice However, if you're going to be using uh, the 16-bit or a float or half, that is actually half, you should be using 2000 as the value. You can even put it in here. As you see, it will adjust. So it's not really hard-coded to 50. But again, like I said, for this simple exercise, we're going to be using 8-bit. So therefore, I'm going to be choosing the 50. If you're wondering how did I come up with these number 50 or 2000, it's actually Zap Anderson wrote this in his uh, PDF regarding the production library. That's how I get these numbers from. However, if you leave a value of 0 in here, or if you give the maximum displacement a value of 0, that means these pixel movement or the encoded of this uh, movement is going to be relative to the image size. For example, my image here is 720 uh, by 486, so it's 720 in the X. That means if the movement happens within 720 in the X, that will be encoded as 1 in the maximum displacement, and so on. If we check blue is magnitude, that means the blue color in the channel represent the magnitude of the blur and the red when the green only encodes the second direction only if this is off then obviously we're not going to be using the blue channel so let's render it with on to see how it will look like 